Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we've got four new colors we're going to try out, all from MF. We have Florida Peach, we have Earthworm Blue, got Transparent Smoke, and Blue Nightmare. These are all colors that I haven't tried before, so I want to try them out. We got our plastic cooking up, and then we'll get to the first color. Alright, so we got our first cup of plastic cooked up. We're going to start with this Florida Peach color. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix these colors up and then decide if I want to add any flake and then what lure I want to make out of them. So we're going to start with about 20 drops or so. So MF is known for having thinner colors. So a lot of times, however many drops you would use with a different brand, you might have to add a little more. We're going to see where this gets us. So yeah, so you can see how much of that stir you can still see down in there. So that's going to be pretty translucent still. I want to add what this kind of looks like to me. It looks like it'd be a really good kind of base color for making like a bluegill where you use that as kind of like the throat color. We're going to add another, let's go 10 drops. All right, so that puts us up to 30 drops. And there we have it. Another way you can kind of check how thick your color is. So like what I was just showing you, you can kind of stick the stir down in, see how much of it you can still see. And then you can also take your plastic, just let a little bit kind of dribble, drizzle out onto the table and that'll give you an idea. So you can still see it's still super thin. So I'm gonna add 10 more. That's gonna put us at 40 drops total. All right, so we are at 40 drops. Had to pause the video real quick, let that plane fly by. But this is what we're looking at right now. It almost kind of looks like a caramel color to me. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of the small 0.015 black flake to it just to give it a little bit of texture. We used a 16th teaspoon of that. Get that stirred in real quick and see what... Another thing to keep in mind is the flake can actually alter the look of the color quite a bit. Um, obviously black flake's gonna make colors appear a little bit darker than normal. Yeah, I like that. All right. So we're gonna leave it right there. We've got 40 drops of the Florida peach and then a 16th teaspoon of the 0 0.015 black. I'm gonna throw this back in the microwave, get it warmed back up and then figure out what mold I wanna try this. All right, so the mold I decided to make is this is the Fat Guys Fishing 2.6 inch swim bait. We're gonna make a few of these and see how they look. All right, plastic has cooled off. Let's check these out. And there they are. I like this color quite a bit. I might add a different color flake, maybe some gold flake or actually even some blue. So I went ahead and made these in a swim bait because what I was thinking of, let me grab it real quick. So I've been playing around with some jig skirt patterns, kind of a nice little like sunfish pattern. I was thinking maybe tie this pattern in a little swim jig and then throw that little trailer on the back. It matches pretty well, I think. So that's where I could add maybe some of that blue flake to kind of tie in some of the blue and throw that little swim bait on the back of one. Kind of like that micro swim jig that I showed you guys last time. But yeah. Pretty cool little color. These molds are really, really nice too. I've got this 2.6, I have a 3.8 and a 4.5 inch versions. I feel like they shoot really well and they are very, very good at catching fish. But we're gonna get this next cup of plastic cooked up and we're gonna move on over to Blue Nightmare. All right, we got our plastic ready to go. We're gonna start with this Blue Nightmare color. 
We're going to do the same. We're going to start with around 20 drops to begin with. All right. Get all that stirred in. So I can already tell this has a little bit of a color shift effect to it. It almost looks like a dark purple. Well, this isn't quite what I thought it was. I think I really, really am gonna like this one. All right, so let's go with another 10 or so. Kind of reminded me of like a June bug color. Maybe that's what we're gonna do. We'll add we'll add a little bit of green flake and see if this makes just a different version of June bug. Let's see. I think I'm gonna add about five more drops of this one and then I'm gonna call it good. All right, and we got our green flake. I'm gonna add the point zero four. A sixteenth teaspoon of that, and then a sixteenth teaspoon of the point zero one five. Let's see what that looks like. I kind of like that a lot more than I thought I was going to. All right. So we're at 35 drops of the Blue Nightmare, a 16th teaspoon of the 0 .04 flag, and a 0 .015, also a 16th in that. We're going to throw this back in the microwave, get it back up to temp, and then we'll figure out what we're going to make with these. All right, we got our plastic back up to temp. We're going to make some finesse worms out of this color. And let's check these out. I'm pretty excited about this color. I think it's going to be a little more translucent than a normal June bug. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you could obviously make the color a little bit thicker, but as it is the way we made it, it's almost like a very translucent, see-through kind of June bug color. I don't know how well you can see through all of that, but really cool. So a lot of the places I've been fishing lately, the water's super clear. So I think this is going to come in handy in some of that super clear water. I like to throw baits that are a little more kind of translucent and see-through in super clear water. But yeah, really, really cool baits. So we're going to get the next cup thrown in the microwave, get it cooking, and then we're going to move on to this earthworm blue. All right, we got this next cup of plastic cooked up. We're going to start with this earthworm blue. Again, we'll do our 20 drops like we've been doing. See what we're looking with or looking like. So I can already tell this is a very thin color with a lot of highlight powder. I can still see that stir almost to the bottom of the cup. So this is one of those that is going to take quite a bit of pigment. Let's go, let's just go another 20. That's close to 20. I kind of quit counting. Let's see what we got. Yeah, this has a ton of highlight powder in it. It's still pretty see-through compared to some of the others. Let's go, let's just go 10 at a time now. I think I already know what I'm gonna make out of this one. But let's see what we get to.
All right, I'm gonna add 10 more and then I'm gonna stop. All right, so that brings us up to 60 drops total. I don't know, I kinda wanna put some flake in this, but I'm not sure yet. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to add, let me grab it. I'm gonna add just a little bit of small red flake to this one. And when I say a little bit, we're gonna go with a one thirty second teaspoon or a smidge, however you want to refer to it. Add some of that in there. Let's see where that gets us. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So this plastic's cooling off a little bit. We're gonna throw it back in the microwave, get it up to temp, and we're gonna run these next molds. All right, we are ready to go. I grabbed some four inch stick bait molds. I'm not sure if we're gonna have enough to get all three, but we're gonna try it and see. Yeah, I think I ran out on that last one. So we're gonna top these first two off just to make sure they're good. I'll go ahead and top this one, last one off, but I don't think it filled all the way. But either way, we've got these. And if the last one didn't fill in, just remember this is a solid color. The easy thing to do would literally just be cut it all back up, remelt it, and then you probably have enough with the plug and the injector put little bits in the cup and all of that to make one more if you really wanted. These molds are cooled off. Let's try this last one first. I don't think it filled in all the way. Yeah, nope. So you can see on these up here where I ran out of plastic at the end. These two down here actually filled in all the way. So I got two good ones out of this and then the two that the tails didn't fill in all the way. And then let's grab one of these complete ones. And there's that color. So you could kind of tweak it a little bit. What I would probably do if I went to make this one again is maybe add a drop of black or maybe even some purple, something just to darken it a little bit. That's still a really cool color. It might even look better adding some of that Florida peach to it to kind of make it like a natural earthworm looking color, kind of combine those two. Actually, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to take these leftovers that didn't uh, fill in all the way with what little bit is left in these cups. And then I'm gonna take some of that Florida peach, I'm gonna put them together, and we'll do, I'll run that at the very end and we'll see what that looks like. Cause now I think it might look really good. But yeah, really cool color. So we're gonna get that last cup cooked up. We're gonna do this transparent smoke. And then at the very end, we'll mix those last two colors like I was just saying, and we'll check it out. And here we go with our last color. We're gonna try this transparent smoke. Start again with our 20 drops. A couple more, we'll be good. Let's see what we got. Okay, yeah, so this is going to be another one of those colors that is super see-through. I can see all the way to the bottom of the cup with 20. So let's go with another 20. So I've got kind of an idea what I want to do with this one. So you can see it still looks fairly dark in the cup but as I was saying earlier like if I were to take some of this and just kind of drizzle it out on the table there's basically no color in that I don't know how well you can see this I'll let it 
cool off a little and I'll show you what I'm talking about. But it's essentially see-through. What I bought this color for originally was, so in some of the color builds we've done, we've added a drop or two of black to darken colors. Well, sometimes one drop of black is way too much. If you want just that tiny little bit of darkening a color, this can come into play. It does look like you're going to have to add probably 10 or 12 drops to get that little bit of color. But this is a way to add just a slight bit of black to darken. So that's, I don't know, roughly another 20 drops. I wasn't really counting. I'm just going to put us up to around 60 drops total. Which I think will be alright for what we're wanting to do. Alright, yeah, I think we're going to be good right there. I haven't decided... I kind of want to add some flake. I don't know if I want to add silver or holographic. Hmm... Let's add, actually, I know what we're going to do. Let me grab it real quick. So we're going to add some of this sparkle violet flake. So this is kind of like, I don't want to call it a color change, but you can see in the cup it just looks white. But you need a dark base for this color to really shine. And you also have to be really uh, conscious about your temperature on that. You can't have plastic over... I would try to keep it below 320 degrees the whole time you're working with this. Otherwise, the plastic or the flake will kind of try to discolor a little bit. But we're going to add some of this in the 0 0.015 size. As I just mentioned, you don't want your plastic hot at all when you do this. So let's see what we're at right now. So we're at 317 degrees right now. But as you can see, when you mix in some of your pigments, you'll get a little bit of bubbles in there. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna throw this in the microwave for like 10, 15 seconds, and then I'm actually gonna run it through the vacuum chamber again real quick, um, just to get all those bubbles out. We'll make sure we're keeping our temperature low, and then we'll add some of this sparkle flake and see what it looks like. All right, while we're letting the plastic do its thing, I'll show you that little drizzle test I was talking about. So even with I don't remember what we had, 40 drops or so of color in that. You can see there's basically no color to it. It's a very, very see-through color. So in the cup, as you remember, it still looks really dark. But then when you have it out by itself, it's very see-through. And where that really comes into play is when you have those baits. Let me grab one. So when you have a bait like this with a thick body, but then these really thin appendages... So your body is going to still look kind of dark, maybe even black, but then your appendages are basically going to have no color whatsoever in there. You can even see in this color how much darker the body is than the legs. So when you're using very see-through colors like this one, it just exaggerates that effect. Your body still may look like it has color, and then the little appendages will be see-through. If that's the effect you're going for, then these colors work great. If not, then you might want to add a little bit more. All right, so we're back. I have given up on trying to get the bubbles out of this. I don't know what it is with that pigment, but I've ran it through the vacuum chamber three times now. When I pull it out of the vacuum, it looks nice and bubble free, and the moment I start to stir it, bubbles just come everywhere. So I'm just gonna roll with it. What you wanna do when you're using this sparkle flake is get your plastic cooked, add your pigment, get everything ready, let your temperature drop back down. We're sitting at around 320 right now. You want to add your glitter, stir it in, and immediately inject. You don't want to reheat this more than you have to. I'm going to go ahead and make some more of these 2.8 inch swim baits, and then if I have any left, I'm going to hand pour this little silicone mold, and I'll show you a couple of those. So we're going to go with a heaping quarter teaspoon of this. Actually, we're going to go with two. So you, with this flake, more is better. You can't add too much of this, in my opinion. We're going to get all this stirred in. So you can see, once it's in the pigment, it gives it that violet effect. Because like I said, this is sparkle violet. They do make other colors. Um, I have blue ordered and on the way. But I know they make green, gold, and maybe red in the sparkle flake. Let me get my glove on. So we're going to run these 2.8 swim baits. And then, like I said, if I have enough, I'll hand pour 
that little silicone mold. And here they are. So it almost gives it kind of, if it's what I was hoping, it's kind of like a little glass minnow effect. So you can see looking straight onto the bait, it's pretty see-through. But then, so fish eat, when they're, say they're uh, feeding on like a ball of shad, they're underneath the shad looking up. So if you look from the bottom, you can see how much that sparkle flake really reflects. So most of the time, that right there is what those fish are going to be seeing. It's still very see-through looking at it from the side. Let me get these out of the mold too because the mold kind of adds a little bit to it. So you can see very, very see-through bait. But then, like I said, from the bottom, you get a lot of that sparkle flake reflecting. And I think it's going to be really, really good. So there's those. And then, so this mold right here, 10,000 fish used to make... I want to say shimmer swimmers. I don't know. They made a little swim bait like this. That one, the head didn't fill in all the way. Let's get another one. So they discontinued the bait and made a new version. But I really, really liked this old version. So what I did was I just took their little bait, popped the eyeballs out, made a mold of it, and now I can keep making my own. I can't sell these baits because they are a like a direct copy of theirs, but I can make these and use them for myself. So you can see... It's just a nice little, so if you've never used these small swim baits, one of the great ways to use both of these, nose hook this on a drop shot and just slowly roll it um, right around like those big bait balls and stuff. Because a lot of times, if, or even if you bring this right through the middle of a bait ball, have you ever seen a ball of minnows or shad or anything? If something hits right in the middle, those minnows scatter out. They'll kind of flare out and then slowly come back together. Well, you come bring this right through the middle of a ball of bait fish all those bait fish are going to spread out and your little lure is just right there all by itself and when a bass sees that they can single out one individual little minnow and go after it so another great way to do this yeah i'm gonna grab some eyeballs we'll throw them on there real quick and then we'll check them all out all right and for these little uh minnows right here what i'm going to do just take some loctite super glue gel just put a dot of glue right there in the eye socket. Get whatever eye that you want. Drop it right down in there. Let it set for a minute. And then do the same to the other side. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to take those two colors that we had talked about. The Florida Peach and the Earthworm Blue. We've got all of our leftovers cut up and thrown together. I'm really curious what these two look like mixed together. We're going to throw them in the microwave, melt it all down, and see what it looks like. All right, we got those two colors melted back down. We're going to try again to get all three of these molds. I think we have a little bit more plastic in this one. As long as I can get a full injector's worth, I think we'll be good. But let's try this out and see what they look like. It is time to check these out. So let's see if this third mold filled on this one. So pretty close. It looks like we got a little dent and air bubbles in here. So again, like last time, we got two of these. Really, I kind of like that color a lot. That's the Florida peach mixed with that earthworm blue. Kind of a just a natural earthworm looking color. Um, a lot of times, custom colors... This is how it happens. We'll be out here testing new colors that we got, and then you get to thinking about, oh, what if I mix this with that? And then a lot of times that's where these custom colors come from. So that one filled in really well. That peach just gives it that little bit more of kind of like the orange tint to it, takes some of the pink off of just the regular um, earthworm blue color. We're going to get all these demolded, and then we'll check them all out. All right, so here is the final haul from everything that we've got. We've got our blue nightmare over here, our Florida peach, our earthworm blue and transparent smoke, and then this was the combination of the earthworm blue and Florida peach. So we'll take a look at each one of these. So this is the blue nightmare. As I mentioned earlier, it's just kind of, it reminds me of like a transparent June bug color. And then obviously that's what we kind of made out of it with the green flake. Super cool color. We've got that one. 
we've got our Florida peach with just that small black flake in that. I think these are going to be really good as little, uh, those little micro swim jig trailers. This is our mix of the Florida peach and earthworm blue. I think it's like a nice natural kind of earthwormy looking color. We could probably even add like a couple drops of brown to this and come up with a really cool color. This one has a little bit of the red and the black flakes since we did mix those two. Pretty cool. This is just the straight earthworm blue with the small red flake in it. And now I know somebody somewhere is losing their mind right now because we made stick baits without salt. I'll address that. There's a reason we did not add salt to these, and I'll explain that here in just a minute. And then we have our transparent smoke with that sparkle flake. These are the little 2.6 inch uh, fat swim baits from Fat Guys Fishing. And then these were those little, it's, it's a 10,000 fish something. I'll look it up. I'll post it right here. But yeah, super cool. I like these little baits a lot. Like I said, you nose hook these, throw them on a drop shot, and just slow roll them on the bottom. Great, great little baits right here. All right, and for everyone wondering about why I made stick baits without salt. So, this is the finesse worm we made. This is a shaky head. This is probably one of the most common ways that I fish this worm. Put the shaky head on there, fish it however you want. Now, what a lot of people think when they think stick bait is throwing it weightless, throwing it on a wacky rig, or so on. However, take one of these weedless EWG style Ned rig hooks and rig it up like that. Here, I'll rig one up for you. And what this does is one, you can look at it two different ways. You either get a bigger profile Ned rig or you get basically a small shaky head out of it. People overlook throwing stick baits on shaky heads all the time. These little weedless Ned Rig heads. So these are the ones that I make. I make these as well. But I know Z-Man makes these. I think a few other companies do now too. Use whatever hook you want. But you throw these little weedless Ned hooks on a 4-inch stick bait. And like I said, you either have a bigger profile Ned Rig or you have a mini shaky head. However you want to look at it, it still works really, really well. I fish a lot of places now that have smallmouth and even just smaller fish in general. Throw a small, catch them all, you know. Sometimes you don't want to go out and throw a big glide bait all day long and hope for one bite. Some days you just want to go out and catch fish. This right here is a very, very efficient way to catch fish. Also, kids. If you have kids that you want to get into fishing and they don't want to throw a big, heavy finesse worm, this is a pretty heavy rig. This is a, I believe this one is a quarter ounce head. For a kid, this is heavy. This is big. This is obnoxious. They might not want to do that. Give them one of these. Get a little weedless Ned Hag, 4-inch Senko. They'll catch fish. They'll have a blast. But yeah, for everyone wondering why I made stick baits without salt, this is why. Give it a try. Let me know what you think. And as always, guys, I really appreciate you guys watching. I know there's been a little gap between videos lately. The weather's been nice. The water's warming up. We've been fishing. We don't just make lures. We love to get out and fish just like you guys. So we will get back to making more videos once the bite kind of slows down. But yeah, thanks for watching. We appreciate all your guys' continued support. Like the video, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Let us know what you guys think, and we'll see you on the next one.